You're listening to the Ballet Piano Podcast, lifting the lid on dance accompaniment. Hello listeners and viewers and welcome back to the penultimate episode of the Ballet Piano Podcast for 2024. It's episode 76. <gasps> We're nearly getting towards the end of August 2024 as we release this. So... What are we going to do for the 100th? Oh, I don't know. We'll, we'll go on a roller coaster. We should and... sit in our, in our pants, shouldn't we? <laughs> <laughs> we'll go on a roller coaster and fly around and talk about, I don't know, hemi semi semiquavers and hemi overs or how you interpret a, you know, um, a tondu. We but... should do it live from the common in class. Happen. <laughs> <laughs> right, before we delve straight in, I'm Chris Hobson. We've got Akika Hobson. Konnichiwa. <laughs> we've got Matt Gregory. Hola. And we've got David Yeo. Hi, everybody. <laughs> right, this is How Pianists Interpret Teachers Marking an Exercise. It's a slightly wordy title, but it does what it says on the tin. Mm-hmm. So, what we've done is taken on the requests and the comments from people, which is, we like it when you play, we like hearing you do what you do. So we thought, well, how can we do this? So we've recorded David setting exercises. He doesn't remember what he's recorded because he did it a couple of months ago. In our living room. In our living room. And then each of us, in one take, watched it and then played what we would play. So we're going to play you David's exercise <clears throat> We're going to then play you the three music examples and we're going to talk about it. And even though this was done a couple of months ago and Chris sent them to me, I did mine this morning at the time of recording. This morning. And I said, I'm "I'm not going to look at them until I plan to do the recording because that's in real life, isn't it? That's real life. I recorded David setting these, but it was in, I think it was February or March when we actually recorded it in our living room. So I, I couldn't remember. I couldn't remember what you told me when you arrived here two hours ago. I can't remember what I did. <laughs> right. Well, you're going to find out now, David. So I Okey believe dokey. the first one was a tondu. Let's see. Do you want to watch yourself as well? Ooh, my goodness. Oh, my Here we go. <laughs> so Batman tondu on a 5-4. Yes. So two bars in. Um, ta, 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 ti, ta, one, ta, 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 ti, ta, 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 in, two, three, in, and ta, 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 ya, ba, ba, in, two. Three, two, ta, ya, ba, 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 um, derriere, and two, balate, 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 soutenu, and hold, plie, reverse, and two, and three, and four. I'm singing, I'm not singing that five or anymore. <laughs> one, two, and three, and four, five, 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 one, two, and three, soutenu, Hold and stop. Disclaimer, when I recorded mine this morning, the first time I slipped into Jazz Waltz because <laughs> I couldn't stick in five. It was 9.30. Oh, fair But yeah. then, so that's, it, it's easily done. Oh, it's you've easily got, done to You've got to out. concentrate right, for five, right. four. Right, so here's one version of it. Number two, please. Thank you. 
So that was Moon River. Mm -hmm. That was Moon River in a ballet studio. This morning. This morning in Covent Garden. But where it's normally in three, you just make every other bar a two, four bar. Yeah. Wow. Last one incoming. really interesting because when you two started to play your first your tunes you sound so similar oh really yeah yeah and then when you i knew it was you because you started to elaborate because you did your thing (laughs) you did your thing (laughs) but it it, i didn't understand i didn't know from the beginning who it was between the two of you yeah really but i knew it wasn't matt that's interesting that's interesting for me is it because you're married? Well, know, we maybe. All, we, all, maybe it is. we all played yeah. the same intro. The intro yeah. was all pretty yeah. much it's the same. It's more of a jazzier 5-4, yeah, that's yeah. what you said. Yeah. Because there's other different ones, isn't yeah. there? Maybe because I've worked with you on and off over the years. I know mm. when you do the 5-4, you can sing take five. So yeah. it's, the, it's the easy go-to right. for me. Right. Yeah. 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 Oh, that's mm. fascinating. I once tried to play somewhere from West Side Story in a 5-4 for your time, but it didn't work because <laughs> right. it, it didn't have the sort of jazzy... <laughs> yeah. Yeah, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, one. It is doable. It is doable. It does work very nicely on a five, four or something, but it just, it, it didn't, it didn't serve right. the exercise yeah. that Tondu for me. But I think when you're butchering a tune like we, ju- we like we, we just did, if you think of a bar of three and a bar of two, yeah. Yeah. that's how I butcher tunes. Mm. I mean, because I did... I, the but David's one... five four plie as well. I, yeah. I do mm. the same thing, a bar mm. of three and a bar of two. Because mm. I did think about doing um, the E.T. theme tune, but mm. doing the same thing, a bar of three and a bar of two. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, yes. three. So, like, oh, so it's well almost done. like a polonaise on five counts, which yes. I remembered because you'd said that. That's how I... you another time. Yeah, one and a two and three and four, five, yeah. one and a two. It's like a polonaise without oh, six. Yeah. Oh, right. So that's another sort of five, yeah. four. Mm. Right. Mm. right. You, so, David, go on. Akika, how do you go about your Swan Lake one? How do you go about doing that? I just came up in my head mm. and I just did it. So You've I, got to feel that five, yeah. haven't you? You, if you? Yeah, you just keep... Go- and then... Yeah, but you know, like being a ballet pianist, everywhere you go, you're constantly picking the tune mm, from, yeah, like, you know, yeah, yeah. A, a, some like adverts or the lift, the shopping mall, yeah, so shopping mall. Really? Oh, that'll work yeah. for ballet. And oh, then really? one day it just oh, comes up. Yeah, actually, 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 I can do this in five. Yeah, because yeah. I've got yeah. a massive list of notes on my iPhone. Yeah, which just says like tunes I'm gonna look at for class. And yeah. it, oh, wow. it would just be anything that I hear. Like if I'm in. If I'm in Tesco shopping or yeah. if I'm mm. anywhere else. Well, you know, my fur release in a Latin style. Yeah. yeah. That was a theme tune for an ITV show once. Oh. I thought, I know fur release. I'm just <laughs> going to put it on that, re- on that rhythm yeah. and feel. And then it becomes a Latin jump. Mm. Oh, wow. Mm. So I think we all did something semi-similar with that, didn't we? But David, your instructions were very clear with what you wanted. For that was crystal clear. It was a very specific five for, and this is where it's, and it's you were you said it was on the upbeat and whatever. Right. So like, even if the tunes uh, we arranged didn't have the upbeat, like mm. Akiko, Akiko made an upbeat yes. in her introduction to sort of facilitate that. So the mm. so the melody. Um, I didn't do copy. that, did I? I know, but you were just testing the dancers, weren't you? <laughs> <laughs> Seeing if they had their were coffees. Were they awake also at 9.30 <laughs> in the morning? Uh, yeah. <laughs> right. Next up, I think it was an adage. Let's see. Adage exercise with the centre. All right. Sorry if I go out of shot because I'm going to start moving around. Okay. On a 3-4, shall we say. All right. So we're starting quasi. And we have four bars in. Five, two, three, six seven and uh, eight. Little step, E1. Développé, carte derrière, two and three. Relevé, en face, fondue, five. Soutenu, six, pas de bourré, seven and a uh, chasse. Arabesque, two. Promenade, three. Rotation, four. And Grand Fouette Italian, five and six and seven. Pas de bourré, under and uh, eight. Then we're on the other side. E1. 
Two Ikate, three Releve on Vase, four, Bonjou, five, Soutenu, six, and Tombe, seven, and uh, eight, Chasse, one, quarter turn, two, Promenade, Rotation, three, and four, five, and six, and seven, Pas de Bourrie, and uh, eight. There we go. So there we go. That's David's Adage set, I mean, dare I say, beautifully. <laughs> <laughs> we were just saying... And well, a square. We were, yeah, I mean, it was square, <laughs> thank was you. Square. But we were saying, yeah, it's, it's nice that we get David to come to our flat and set ballet exercises with nobody else here, <laughs> <laughs> just with me with a camera. <laughs> oh, it's part of the brand. Right. <laughs> Pianist number one. Here we go. <laughs> That's you, that diddle, diddle, that's your signature. I do little things like that, don't uh -huh. I? It's very emotional. Little things like that as well, my little fill-ins, help me keep the tempo. Mm. Because yeah. you're filling in between the bar lines, yeah. it stops you changing the yeah, tempo, right. it keeps you, you know... It gives it you that sort you... of metric... Yeah, exactly. Um, ...stimulation. Yeah. Right, here's a Kiko. so pretty Ooh. is that bar it's a gold belt <laughs> but yeah. i'm sure classical pianists are going to kill me now. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know these certain things like johnny lowe said in his episode a couple of weeks ago didn't he He said like is there a tune that you want to play but don't play yeah oh. or what tune can you reference but you know what i'm sure the... many people don't want to do this <laughs> i don't i've never played goldberg for class but hearing that i think i might maybe have a little play with it at some point mm. and see what i come up with I don't know. But in this, in a similar vein, hymns work yeah. just as yeah. well because they're very sort of chordal and sort of minimal. Yeah. Very churchy. Very churchy. Right. And, churchy. And, and they're lovely. Right. Mm. This one's not that churchy. <laughs> <laughs>
gorgeous. That's the, that's the Moon River ending. It is the Moon River Milky ending. <laughs> yeah. And as we were just saying then, why would you play a C major scale ascending yeah. when you can just smash out a glissa and go? <laughs> <laughs> but all right, so three different pieces of music, but I think all equally as passionate, yeah? For a dancer to to that all three pieces are so inspiring in completely different ways, but all all of three of you on an emotional level for a dancer would make me want to dance. Mm. I'm sitting in my seat wanting to get up and dance right now. <laughs> Don't let us <laughs> stop you, David. That's, that's the oh. talking, David. <laughs> Wind back for years, I would. <laughs> but that, that, that's what you need as a dancer. You need to be moved. And I was, I was just watching, my sister sent um, this clip about, um, have, you seen, have you watched the, the piano, the, the competition that they have on Channel 4? Oh, on Channel 4, yes. 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 With yes. Mika and Lang Lang. They have this um, guy from Liverpool, um, uh, his name is Brad, I think. Right. And he's playing this and he's composing. He's, these pieces are composed. So they don't have a recognizable tune. Yeah. But I was already in tears within oh, four oh bars wow. and I was in tears. And the audience, they, they pan to the audience, they're all crying. Oh. And that's what you want in a pianist yeah. is, to, is to help you to bring you, bring you with them yeah. with, on that journey. Yeah. So, I mean, that shows you can play pop music. You can play, you can yeah. play Baroque music. You can play musical theatre. Absolutely. And if you play it with certain passion and intensity it will totally. work for mm. a variety of stuff in class and with adage you can go big or go home uh, or you can just absolutely put that tiny spotlight on reduce. it and just yeah. make yeah. it just hang so delicately in the air and it mm. works and the dancers love absolutely. both yeah mm. yes. and that trick of being big on one side and yeah. tiny on the other. ian knowles told me that for plies he said oh let's just do an experiment First side of plays, absolutely nothing, as sparse mm. as you like. Mm. And second time, second side, really give yeah. it to them and see what happens. See, I oh. like doing that in adage in the opposite way. So I like starting massive mm. and yeah. really giving it. You know, say with something giving like... Giving it all up front. Giving yeah. it all up front, yeah, showing off. Swipe right. <laughs> um, you know, no try before you buy, just go for it. <laughs> so giving it the, you know, say like that I just did, you'll never walk alone. Yes. Yeah. But then if that was only the first side, yeah. really taking it down 90% and maybe just doing the, you know, the feather theme from Forrest Gum. Oh, but yeah. Jumping up to the top of the piano. Yeah. So you've got, you know, you've got the next three phrases, you've got the next 24 bars of total sparseness yeah. and the opposite of what you just yeah. had and then just for the last eight counts re bring it back in yes. so it finishes at the level that it started just oh to watch gosh. the different emotions yeah. funny story for the performance platform oh yes i when we did the when we did the taster classes on thursday i played you'll never walk alone and they loved it for the class yeah but they had to do it on the day of the competition the following day and they used rcd yes. which is you doing it oh, i got so yeah. many compliments for that <laughs> and it was everyone said how beautiful for that recording was because they thought I was like oh. that's great because <laughs> I play it differently yeah. you make the melody move like, yeah. almost twice as quick as I do yeah the same but I, there I, are two I ways of playing it yeah. yeah, cool. right dancers and listeners in a couple of weeks listen to we that and we will both. We'll, we'll stick both on the YouTube mm. and the social media I was going to say we'll put a vote out on there but we won't because I'll lose <laughs> you won't <laughs> Right, so on this musical hop, skip and a jump through how pianists listen to David and then basically ignore him and do whatever <laughs> we want to do. <laughs> I think it was a Pity Allegro date. So let's see. Here we go. Pity Allegro on a 6-8. All right. Okay, so you've got your right leg derriere. Yeah, and we're going to do 5 under, 6 under, 7 and 8. Jeté over, ton levé, jeté over, ton levé. Yes? Glissard, tom de cuisse. Ton levé, coupé, toe chassé, and assemblé en avant. I'll go back a little bit, I'll do the other side. Yeah? So rhythmically it goes, e one and two and three and four, e five and a six and a seven and eight. Right, so that was the exercise. Here's a Kiko. <laughs> Matt's here. <laughs> I feel like I've 
you heard before? You all play it. It's Human Again from Beauty and the Beast. <sighs> but much quicker. Ah, I didn't, I, I know, I, I, I know, I knew I knew the melody, but I didn't know where it was from. Yeah. It was one yeah. of those. Yeah. From the stage version yeah, of the, yeah, the yeah. musical, yeah. Right, last one. So Akiko said that hers was her go-to. That's my go-to. And that was, it's known as the piano from hell. <laughs> and it was from Northern Ballet's A Christmas Carol composed by the late, great Carl Davis. Oh. And it was just before, and it was written in the score, the three old hags come out. <laughs> 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 but it was just, and it was known because it was basically, it was, it's not very hard to play, but you were in a, in a pit with a clavin over and you put it on the most horrendous honky tonk piano sound going. And then oh. just after that finishes, there's a massive glissando and it slows down and all the strings join in, but ever so slightly out of tune. Oh. And it just all goes a little bit hellish mm. and a bit sort of tavern scene. Yeah. So that, that was my, that's oh, my golden that. go-to for anything mm. like that. And mm. I think, uh, yeah. I, on a six, I play that waltz from the Merry Widow, which I'm sure we all know. Yeah. But that works for six, eight as well. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. that can often feel quite slow on a 3-4, depending on how you play it and how you fill it in, can't it? Like yeah. for a big sort of Grand Allegro yeah. waltz or for a 680 sort of waltz, mm. that's quite perfect. Mm. But I think we were all quite similar in our approaches to that, weren't we? Relatively. Mm. Obviously, the melodies yeah. were different, but we all started playing at roughly the same time. Yeah. The introductions were basically identical. I mean, I played that very quick. That wasn't the tempo you set, David. <laughs> <laughs> but it was a 9.30 but, tempo. <laughs> yeah, exactly. The dancers were starting to come into the studio. <laughs> oh, right. And actually, knowing me, if I'd have had the dancers in front of me, I would have just yeah. sorted that out very quickly. Mm. Mm. I mean, tempos for this purpose are just... It's, just, it's an irrelevance now. But do <laughs> you, like... Not. So this, this is just obviously one set that David and we did just did one set, right? But, like, it's the same as others, like... I want to know whether they're going to do right and left continuously. Yes. Uh, or if it's a jump, oh, do you yeah. want the four counts in between or eight counts in between? Yeah. Because yeah. if it's continuously, there's so much I can do. Mm. But if I have to yeah. do like four in between or like you have to like, sometimes you have to cut this exciting yeah. bit of the music. Mm. It interrupts yeah. what you're trying to do. Yeah, I find that often with adages actually, certainly with center yeah. adages, like when I really want to go big yeah yeah and then if the teacher was saying that and if it's only 16 counts each time like, oh that's a shame <laughs> <laughs> it's like i can't do my modulation in the middle or i can't you know yeah. the, the glissando won't fit in and i yeah. can't start off with the glissando in the introduction because it's not appropriate at that but point like, and then some tune like others like you know it's 64 counts and complete actual music whole yeah. music and then they said oh right right side and then stop and like you just can't yeah, lose yeah, it half of it. Yeah, because you've set yourself up to do both sides and then yeah. you suddenly stop and you, it's, it's that sort of like, you know, you didn't quite climax moment or yeah, something. Yeah, and like, if you put the, the four guns in between, it just doesn't work, does yeah. it? Yeah. Have you ever done that in adage though, where you, you leave your tune unresolved on the dominant seventh yeah. or something mm. or a mm. fancy... I've I've done that. It's, it's quite quite. An, just quite leave. It. It's yeah, just leave it hanging. It, read the room and if yeah. it's appropriate to do it, just try it. And then some musical idiot... Some musical savvy person will be listening for you to resolve it. Yeah. That's what I meant. But, to and say. Then, and then, <laughs> but you don't resolve it, and that's almost like, Yeah. I will do that actually often. Not often, but you know, it's sparse regularity. If the exercise stops halfway through, yeah, and I won't try and resolve it because yeah. you know the climax is coming for the, which would be your second side. Yeah, and if you uh, if you play "Let It Go" from Frozen, mm. it finishes on the subdominant, so <laughs> I just leave it. Yeah, yeah. It never. What's it? What's the, the cold word? never bothered me anyway. Yeah. It's like the subdominant or something. Because we're from the north, the cold doesn't bother us. <laughs> <laughs> right, and like every good ballet class, it finishes with a grand allegro. So here's David setting a Grand Allegro for women and for men. Grand Allegro, okay? Forgive our little restricted space, but we're going to kind of fit it all in. All right, on a big, big waltz, all right? We have four bars in to, walk, to run in, five and uh, six up to the top corner, 
seven second arabesque, allongé et entrelacé, facing the corner, two gallop, three grand jeté en avant, pas de bruit, posé, piqué, and fondu and grand fouetté sauté, landing first arabesque, et grand assemblé en tournant, and stand and chassé, coupé, step soda basque, soutenu for the gentleman, plié double tour. Yes, for the ladies after the assemblé, step back, tombe par de bourré en glissade, développé jeté. So it goes with the music, five and a six and a seven and eight and a one and two and a three and four and a five and a six and a seven and a eight. E one, gentlemen, and three and four, e five and six, soutenu, seven, e eight. David couldn't have been more crystal clear in that setting, could He's he? He's like Tiffany, isn't he? Uh, <laughs> right. Yeah. Swarovski. Right. This is how I butchered David's musicality. <laughs> <laughs> did in that record was because David said um for the gents and for the ladies I thought well the ladies should come first because they're ladies so I played for the ladies first then I did a version for the men and the men like it slower often oh. and heavier and usually they'll yeah. try and add in multiple pirouettes at the end which I know irritates David but <laughs> When I recorded that, David wasn't here, so I could do what I wanted. I could facilitate those multiple pirouettes and ruin that music, and David couldn't do a thing about it. <laughs> so that was Walter My Heart. That's, I'll be honest with you. Oh, I love that. It's my yeah, golden go to it? for it. It's just a beautiful tune. And you can fill it out because yeah. the melodies, it's not sparse, but it's, you, know, you, can, you can drag it out, and the melody the still melody stands is, the test of time. The melody is beautiful. Very yeah. uplifting, isn't it? You could <clears> even re harmonize that with mm. the same melody and do something. It's, the melody Melodies, it's the it's, melody yeah, is great. The melody just functions. And even the accompaniment, it's got the right lifts where yeah. you need it. And, and you, can sm you can put the accents on, you yeah. know, two and three or two or three. And it just, and it will work. And it mm. withstands an absolute butchering that mm. tune. So I, it's been, it's been my, go one of my golden go-tos for years. That one. <laughs> right. What did Matt do? So the, the the versi bit is in C major, and then the chorus bit goes to C minor. But there's so many little chromatic bits in it, which adds a bit of tension. Really yeah. Nice. And if you've got the men on that, the chorusy bit, it goes minor. It goes a bit bigger. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And actually, it starts in C, and then you've got D over C, which gives it. What even is that chord called? Do you know what I mean? Like D over C. And it, it C major with D in the bass. That's it. Yeah. No, yeah. C in the bass, D major with C in the bass. Oh. It just keeps getting lifted. Mm. Anyway, I, I, I do like that. I love yeah. that. I'm going to nick that. Do you mind? <laughs> <laughs> no, no because you'll play it better than me. This is we never listen to jazz, right? No, the so three we don't of us know what the other pianists do. No, I know. It's like even when we all work together. Yeah. Every now and then. In That's the Western Hemisphere, actually. we never hear each other because, like, like no. if Matt was coming in, it would quite often be because I wasn't there or Akiko right. wasn't there, and vice versa. And of course, if Matt was in and Akiko was off, I was working, right. and mm. so the studios never cross. So this is probably the most we ever hear each other play. It is actually, yeah, it's quite nice. I, I love like it. it. Yes, yeah. 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 right. Last one. Oh. You okay, Akiko? <laughs> no, I'm. Do you want a prosecco that. top up? No, it's okay. <laughs>
Bravo. I love Yay. that. I love but that. It's, 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 I mean, it's nice, but the original one is nicer. What's you, the original? I mean, because it's not square. Oh, I see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know that bit. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it, yeah so you have to... But you get the but, flavor of it. Yeah, yeah. yeah that tune. I just, I need. Flavor. I've got the. You gave me the dots. I've not learnt it yet. <laughs> <laughs> I really. It's such a. Everyone plays it, but it's just. Mm. Did it, I love it. Mm. It's very I uplifting. really love it, and it yeah. works really well because that's another one for a Grand Allegro that will st mm. that will it will take a load of butchering, won't it? That one. Mm. Yeah. You can really pull it about, and you can stretch it. You can speed it up. You can. Yeah. And, and it just. I think. I think Jonathan said to me there was a maybe like in the 90s or something everyone used to ask for that and everybody mm. played it oh. like it was so fashionable that yeah. tune right. oh. and everybody played it in every class yeah. virtually and okay. jonathan said that tune was like really fashionable so it's like stood up hasn't it mm. oh. the test of time oh. it's great though no, it's a, that's a good that's a good go to. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. I will be learning it. <laughs> anybody say, like because you see the, the uh, David setting, but you are playing on your own. Yeah. Didn't you feel a bit nervous because you don't see the dancers in front of you? Oh, I well, felt a little hey. bit strange ah. for that Grand Allegro. I yeah. just use my muscle memory and sort yeah. of just. Yeah. Imagine what I, I would be I didn't doing. feel nervous because when I did it, I was at home on my own. So mm. I it just set up the kit. Well, whereas, Kiko, yeah, yeah. whereas yeah. Kiko had me here because I'd set up the microphones for a Kiko. Uh, yeah. And then you had people in your studio, didn't you? Yeah, but the, the dancers, yeah, no, that, no, no one. They were just yeah. like a couple women. Yeah, 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 Chris yeah. giggled one of them and then <laughs> just made me feel like this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but come on, even in the... Um, what did I play for my adage for you? Um, you'll never walk alone. I play a wrong note because I always do somehow. And I always play a wrong note. Instead of playing a C, I always, um, C octave, I always clip a top B as well when I do it because it's just awkward for my fingers. Yeah. I just hate having another pianist in my class. You well, guys, <laughs> you the other day, oh, you know, yes. I was playing in the cross and then suddenly these guys. <laughs> just turned up. Yeah. Oh, and yeah. then the teacher was like, oh, come in, come in. I was like, no, yeah, they're was, not coming in. It was when we we were in, we recorded Johnny Lowe's episode it on location. School, yeah. uh, let's say we were on Floral Street. Yeah. And then, so we set up then, upstairs. We went, uh, Akiko and says Chris we waved. sat next to me. <laughs> I went and sat away from Akiko. And no, you were sitting in the Lowe's studio. And he sat on a knee, basically, you. and put her <laughs> off. And he was drinking on my finger. Chris, yeah, this one. Uh, he was like. <laughs> <laughs> I'm too, yeah, not sorry. But it was funny. As it we was, all know, no. humour wins. <laughs> right. Let us know what you thought. What would you have played for David's um, setting? If you want to stick some comments in the uh, comments below on Facebook or Twitter or on, what's the other one, Instagram, etc. That's great. And make sure that you join us next week for the final episode of the Ballet Piano Podcast for 2024. And it's called Question Time. But it's the opposite of what you've heard recently because you've never heard us basically try and probe each other and annoy each other and ask each other questions. And some of Matt asked some leading questions. Oh, yes. Yeah. And, you know, there is <laughs> some of it's fun. And but there is, you know, the usual bit of insightfulness in there as well, I think. And it's going to be a fantastic episode. So that's going to drop <coughs> next week. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> So yeah, so please join us next week. So until then, it's goodbye from me. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye, everybody.